it's my pleasure to welcome Professor Anthony Schinkel, who's the head of the SKA program at Australia's CSIR Space and Astronomy program. He's also had a long career in radio astronomy, responsible for the design, construction, and commissioning of a whole range of facilities across the globe, uh, including the ASCAPE. SKA Pathfinder, of, on which I'm sure he'll speak to us. And most recently, he's been responsible for heading the preparations for the uh, construction of the SKA Low component. Um, Professor Schinkel, over to you. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, welcome this afternoon or this morning or this evening, depending on, of course, uh, where you are in the, in the world, um, to this new way of doing conferences. So uh, I'm gonna to talk to you about um, Sustainability, in particular with respect to our activities in Australia, both before the SKA and for the SKA, with respect to the Wajri Yamaji, the Wajri of the indigenous group of the region. And I thought I'd focus in quite a lot on, on how the SKA uh, and CSIRO and the partner countries will work with them with a focus on these sustainable development goals. I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, the Wadjuri people who are the kind hosts for the SKA in Western Australia, the Darug people who are from where I'm presenting at my house today, and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. I also would like to just state that the presentation contains images of Aboriginal people who are or who may be deceased. I think as many of you know, Aboriginal people have been in Australia for over 40,000 years and throughout the landscape are their sites, stories, memories. Just recently, even that was found to be flawed, that it's much more than 40,000. In fact, there's strong evidence now for their presence of over 60,000 years in, in Australia. This map shows you some of the clan and tribal groups within Australia, not the language groups, but the the more dominant uh, tribal groups, and you can see there are hundreds there. The area where the SKA telescope is being built is over in near in Western Australia, near the coast, uh, over here, and of just where that marker is, in the Wadjuri uh, area. And that's a very large part. You can see it's one of the larger claimant sections. So who is the SKA in Australia? I'm gonna tell a little bit about that so you can understand some of the context. I know some of the previous talks have given you that. I'm gonna tell you about why we're going there uh, and some of the key aspects of the, the legislative uh, side of um, Australia and how that affects some of the things we're doing with our sustainable development goals. And of course, what the actual goals are. I think the telescope, you've already got a pretty good handle on at this point. Here in Australia, the low telescope will be 130,000 of these dipole antennas scattered around an area about 80 kilometers by 75 in an area up in the Murchison, 800 kilometers north of Perth. Why we're going there, of course, is to avoid all of the radio frequency interference, much like optical astronomy has so many problems from light pollution, radio astronomy has exactly the same and basically as most of you know, if it's got electricity, it has the potential to generate noise. So we're going out here into the Murchison Shire, which much like the Karoo for SKA Mid, has got wonderfully low background emissions of radio frequency integration, uh, radio frequency interference. This region up north of Geraldton is in the Murchison Shire. Uh, it's a large piece of land, about 41,000 square kilometers. It has no gazetted towns. It has a population of up to 120 people if everybody's at home. And just for some context, that's the Shire next to the Netherlands, population about 16 and a half million, and next to Massachusetts, population about 6 million. This really gives you some sense of how incredibly remote and um, deserted, relatively speaking, this land is and why it's so attractive for radio astronomy. The piece of land we're moving to, the Baladi station, is a pastoral station from about 160 years ago. It's shown here, the outline in that, that blue perimeter, about 110 kilometers long and about 90 kilometers wide. The green lines you can see there are the um, roads and tracks that will actually join together the stations with all the SKA low antennas on them. 
here it is overlaid on a map of Sydney or for those in the north on a map of England to give you some sense of the size. And there's a very specific reason I'm driving hard on the size of this piece of land. Traditionally, the Wajri would have used this piece of land for their normal existence for tens of thousands of years. They hunted, they lived there, they passed through there to other areas. The population, we never really have a good handle on. We don't understand it well yet. It probably varied from tens to hundreds, possibly at peak periods into the thousands. That means that in fact, there is significant heritage on this land, and that's a very important part of our engagement with the Wadjuri. So what are we trying to achieve both with our current telescopes and our engagement with the Wadjuri, and in particular now looking into the future with the SKA's engagement? I started listing these out and realized that um, there was in fact a very close alignment with many of the sustainable development goals that this meeting is, is here to discuss and, and look at. So, uh, of course, a dominant sort of overlying one is around the inequalities that exist in much of, of the world these days. And many of the specifics of the other 16 relate to that in some way or another. And I'm going to go through these in, in a little bit of detail to show how we're trying to address at least some of them. A brief piece of important legislative history, however, in Australia until 1992, our laws didn't recognize that indigenous people had any right to the land re re relating to their original ownership and traditional customs. Through a process I won't get into here, it's too much detail, in 92 followed by subsequent amendments, there was a Native Title Act passed that basically did recognize uh, finally the indigenous people's role, their history on the country and gave them significant rights to do with developments on much of that land in the future. Recognition of these the native title rights means that any group wishing to do development of particular types of land, such as ourselves with the SK telescope or, or mines for that matter and other activities, have to work with the native title group um, to come up with uh, a compromise that is acceptable to the indigenous people, in our case, the Wadjuri people. And it's a, and a very important step. It's enshrined in legislation but I think it's an extremely important step even without the legislative requirements because of its recognition of the Wadjuri's long history in, in Australia and their, their rights. So what are we actually doing about this? What, how are we moving forward in, in working with the Wadjuri and, and helping them develop sustainably? So very specifically, here are some examples. So we are implementing a program with uh, employment and contracting opportunities with the Wadjuri where bidders for contracts on the work are required to have a certain percentage of the work go to Wadjuri employees, uh, to Wadjuri uh, small medium enterprise companies. We set up a business development and assistance program whereby we will help these small companies develop uh, capability so that they can grow not only into working on the SKA, but frankly, much more importantly, other opportunities where they can go on and win contracts doing work uh, well outside the scope of, of radio astronomy. We're supporting their recognition of language um, and across a, a wide range of areas, we're supporting it through um, the, the support for spoken language and also through naming. So aspects of uh, our existing telescopes and of the SKA um, will probably have Wadjuri names. And you can see in the top right corner here, a list of some of the names that the Wadjuri have given to parts of the ASCAP telescope. We've also been supportive uh, of a Wadjuri art program, which has produced many fine pieces of art and also a touring exhibit in conjunction with artists from South Africa. And much of that art is now in fact available there at the SKA general headquarters in Manchester. And I would hope that any visitors there please do take the opportunity to go and look at the art that's come out of these programs in both countries. We also recognize that the 160 years of pastoralism has done significant damage. The, the land was overgrazed by cattle and sheep for this period. And we've now undertaken a program of rehabilitation, which is again, um, a good match to one of the sustainable development goals, number 15. This rehabilitation will take um, intimate 
knowledge and engagement with the Wadjuri through a ranger program to help us learn what was the original vegetation, how did the early uh, the the animals live there, what were the processes associated with maintaining the land, how did they use natural fire. It's a long-term goal and we won't rush into it, but it's a very important goal for uh, for us and for the project. Another very key part of what we're doing, of course, is in the area that was uh, discussed by um, Anna and Carla in, in their earlier talks as well, which is education, communication and outreach. In particular, in the education areas, we have a, a program that cuts across everything from primary school through high schools, vocational schools and university. One of the things we found uh, in our early work in this area for ASCAP and the existing telescopes was that we were perhaps a little overly ambitious and, and sought to, to go a little bit too high with university endowments and scholarships. And under the new program, we're making sure we start at a younger age and get the, the, the children, the Wajiri kids when they're much younger, uh, to be able to see not just the opportunities of the astronomy, but again, as Carla was pointing out, much more critically, the other opportunities that come out of these kinds of activities. The big data research, which is applied in so many other areas, such as agriculture, um, earth imaging, and um, medicine, of course. It's, it's that breadth that we want people to understand. We want to use the astronomy and SKA to give examples and to, and to show the excitement. But we also want them to look well beyond that and to be able to apply the skills they learn in other areas. I say there's two directions here because I think a very important area is also to educate the community about the capabilities of the Wadjuri companies, the Wadjuri individuals, and the, the culture and skills that they bring to us. Here are just uh, a few images, in fact, of our engagement with um, different groups from primary school groups um, to middle school groups, both in the classroom and out of the classroom associated with the astronomy programs. Furthermore, we've got an engagement with the Piawajri community, which is just down on the south edge of the Bilardi station, to improve their infrastructure. So far, we've done significant work on their internet access and education opportunities. And the new program will also allow not only significantly improved um, uh, internet access and expanding the education programs, but also we're going to do a lot more work on the infrastructure there, including water quality improvements and significantly upgrading their power so that it becomes far more affordable and as critically far more sustainable with a significant uh, solar capability. One part of our work that um, uh, I, I think is extremely critical and harking back to our recognition of the Wadjuri people uh, and their role in the land and living there for so many thousands of years is the protection of the heritage that they've left. So many people go into the region and think it is desolate and has no signs of population. But to those in the know, there is in fact extensive artifacts, heritage uh, and, and ceremonial sites that we must be very careful in building the SKA not to damage. And these sites range from camping sites, tool making areas, hunting and gathering regions, ceremonial sites, through to various ethnographic sort of locations. This recognition is a very key part of, of the SKA's future on this piece of land. As part of that, um, before we disturb any of the land, in fact, we have to go through a process called heritage surveys, where a team of Wadjuri people accompanied by professional archeologists and anthropologists walk all of the proposed land that would be disturbed during the construction of the telescope to look for any of these heritage sites to make sure that we take um, appropriate mitigations to minimize any disturbance of them. And it's a long process and a very important one. Some of the sites that have been found range from artwork sites to um, scar trees where uh, everything from um, shields to um, food serving plates have been taken to uh, artifacts such as um, these shields uh, have been discovered lying around uh, on, on the Bloody Station as well as food preparation stones. 
So I hope I've shown you a little bit that in our existing work and in the work with the SKA in the future, much of what we're going to be doing with the, with the Indigenous people from this region, with the Wadjuri, is substantial work in the area of sustainable development goals. These cover everything from employment, training, education, all with the idea of working well outside, of course, SKA itself, but also going through to ensure we protect the land, we protect their heritage, and do all of this in a way that's sustainable for the long term. Thanks very much for your time.